This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad and live today. One of the earliest games that you learn as a child is the game of rock, paper, scissors. It's fun, it's easy to play, you know how it goes. Rock defeats the scissors, scissors defeats the paper, and then paper defeats the rock. All three elements are on an equal plane as they have the power to beat an opponent as well as to be defeated by an opponent. Now while the game can be fun, the comedian by the name of Dimitri Martin finds this game to be a little problematic. This is what Dimitri has to say about the game. He says, you know, when I think about it, I only like rock, paper, scissors about two thirds. You know what I mean? You know, rock breaks the scissors. Oh, wow, look at these scissors. They're bent, they're destroyed. I can't cut anything up, I lose. Scissors, it cuts paper. Yeah, look at my paper. It's just strips now. It's not even paper anymore. It's gonna take forever to get it put back together again. You got me. Paper covers rock. Rock is fine. No structural damage to rock. Rock can break through the paper at any moment. You just give the word. Dimitri says that it really should be called rock, dynamite with a cuttable wick, scissors. Well, whether one finds the comedian funny or not, I think we all can agree that he's hit the nail on the head when it comes to the properties of rocks. Rocks are very durable. They're difficult to alter. They're extremely solid and could withstand much pressure when put to the, to the test. I remember back when I was five years old playing on the swing set. I was standing up on the swing, the swing came out from under me, and I went head first, boom, swan dive right into a rock. Forehead smacked it. The rock didn't give. Obviously, my forehead did, and so I had to go and get stitches. You know, as I went screaming to my parents, I could faintly hear that rock yelling in the background. Rock is fine. No structural damage to rock. And what is it that Jesus says about rocks? He says that everyone who hears the words that he proclaims is like the man who built his house on a rock. The rains fell, the floods came, the winds blew and beat the house, but it did not fall because it was founded on rock. Those building their homes on sand will experience a house that will collapse and be washed away when the storm brews. Jesus understands the toughness of rocks to the point that he proclaims that every one of his followers should build his or her own faith life on the one who provides strength in times of weakness, the one who gives guidance to the lost, the one who fills hearts with joy and with love when desperation and despair rear their heads. Christ is the foundation that God's kingdom is built upon, and that foundation is as solid as any rock can be. Even as Jesus proclaims these bold words of invincibility and immunity to any counter power of sin and evil, he also commissions his disciple Peter to continue the ministry once Jesus has left the earth. If you remember from last week's gospel reading, Jesus asked Peter, who do you say that I am? Peter responds, well, you are the Christ the Son of the living God. Jesus then says, And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the powers of death will not prevail against it. Now when you take a look at the Greek text, we see a play on words in that Petros means Peter, and Petra means rock. So in a sense, while Christ is the foundation of the church and of our very faith, Peter is the rock from which it will begin to be built. Peter will be that first stone of many stones, for this house of God that is being built day by day is built upon many stones as the gospel is spread across the countryside. But why Peter? In this time of democratic and republican conventions, one might wonder, what are Peter's qualifications to be the rock, to be the one who will help shape and to guide the early Christian church? Well, if Peter had the podium, he'd point to his own faith. While others said that Jesus was John the Baptist or Elijah or Jeremiah or one of the other prophets, it's Peter who boldly states that Jesus is in fact the Messiah. He's strong as a rock in his faith. He's unwavering, he's intelligent, and he's courageous enough to be a good leader. 
Unfortunately for Peter, by saying all these things, he's embellishing his resume just a little bit. Let's take a look at our gospel for today. Jesus tells the disciples that God's plan is to have him go to Jerusalem, where he's going to undergo great suffering at the hands of the authorities there, and where he will be crucified on a cross. Well, Peter, he's not having any of that. He pulls Jesus aside and he says, God, forbid it, Lord. This will never happen to you. Jesus lashes back at Peter with some of the strongest words in all of Scripture. Get behind me, Satan for you are a stumbling block to me. Now, wait just a minute. A stumbling block? I thought Peter was the building block. One minute, Peter's being praised for his faith as he's brought up to the head of the class, and the next minute, he's sent off into the corner to wear a dunce cap. So much for being a rock. So much for knowing what this kingdom of God is all about. Well, Peter has his mind on human things, he neglects the divine reason that Christ has come to the earth in the first place. We see Peter's weakness again after Jesus' arrest. He denies knowing Jesus three times in order to save his own hide. Now, not that I wouldn't do the same, but doesn't it seem like there are more strikes against Peter than ones that are for him? He's displaying some very unrock like qualities. He's weak, He's like a pile of sand. He wavers in his faith. He's scared. He doesn't know everything. He has adopted the properties of a rock in rock, paper, scissors. He has been defeated by a single sheet of paper. Peter turns out to be human, just like us. In life, we experience the same things as Peter did. We feel confident and strong and intelligent and courageous. Things are going great in life. Then, all of a sudden, our rock is covered by paper. Our own desires and selfishness get in the way of our discipleship, and we become immobile. We freeze up right there in place. We're blind, confused, and weak because of our own sins. We are no longer rocks. We are now stumbling blocks. But we don't have to surrender. We don't have to accept defeat. We can turn to our Lord and ask for his forgiveness and love. We can turn back to him and experience victory in the cross as Jesus helps us to bust through that paper like a football team running through a butcher paper sign on a Friday night. Rock is fine. No structural damage to rock. At the end of John's Gospel, the risen Christ has a conversation with Peter, and he reassures him that three different times that he wants Peter to take care of his people. Despite all the shortcomings that Peter exhibits, Jesus continues to love and to trust and to count on Peter to share the good news of the resurrection with others. Jesus wants him to be as strong as a rock as his church is built one stone at a time. In that same vein, Jesus calls each of us imperfect sinners to join in on this construction project. We are all living stones, which means that we are actively finding new ways to love and to show compassion to our neighbor while relying on the strength of God's Spirit to guide our lives. We might not always be right. We might not be ideal or faultless, but God insists on using us as his instruments to demonstrate his love. Amen. Remember as you go about your day, that yesterday is gone, tomorrow does not yet belong to you. So why not live today, knowing that you never walk alone? See y'all next week. Later.